we continue to look at the implications and the possibilities of a God who creates through the process of evolution. And today we're going to look at a very specific concept, and that's the concept of design. I know that anyone who has ever spent some time in nature and, and observed the beauty of how ecology is just woven together in such an amazing way, the engineering, the design that goes into specific flowers attracting specific insects, how well they are adjusted to help one another reproduce, to, to feed one another. The, the birds, the insects, the plants, the animals, everything seems to be engineered to work together. And so the concept of design is seemingly apparent when we look at how well nature fits together. What is often not that apparent or not immediately observable are the thousands, the tens of thousands of species, of plants, of animals and insects that went extinct in order to produce nature as we have it today. And so I want to look at the concept of design in and taking into account the evolutionary process that brought about the design that we can observe today because it's obviously not the normal or, or the shallow way in which we can conceive of design which is some person sitting somewhere and drawing up a, a plan drawing out a blueprint and then manufacturing everything according to that blueprint uh, some people still conceive of God and creation in that way but if we take into account all these species that went extinct to produce the current order then if there was such a, a semi-god such, such a demigod that sat at the beginning with a blueprint then either He's not very intelligent because most of his designs failed. Or this God is sadistic who delights in the suffering and extinction of most of his creation that produced this current one. But what I want to present to you today is a vision of a God who is more giving, more gracious, more intelligent than what we have ever imagined. This is not the architect kind of God that, that stood at the beginning drawing out the exact designs and then manipulated everything in order to produce those designs. But rather, this is the God who is the source of all creativity. The God who enables his creatures to participate with him and invites them um, and draws them into greater being, greater novelty, greater beauty. And so uh, I want to take into account those evolutionary processes and then say, how do we understand design and how do we understand God if evolution is the way in which he creates? Um, so let's get into this. So the first thing that I've kind of hinted at is this is not the God who stands behind us with a plan trying to draw his wayward creatures back into his original plan. But rather this is the God of possibilities. Remember when Jesus introduces us to his father, he says this is for God, all things are possible. It's the God of possibility. So instead of the God who stands behind us with certainty, with a plan, this is the God who stands in front of us with possibility and the invitation for us to participate with him in the act of, of creating. I love the way in which N.T. Wright explores this subject, and I'll post a little video with this as well. He, he describes the kind of creation we can expect if Christ 
is our starting point. Christ, whom the scripture says, all of creation is through him and for him. We can therefore assume that it, it takes on his character. And drawing from the parable of the sower that, that Jesus uh, told, we can expect creation, therefore, to be like the extravagant sowing of seed, where, where some seed goes to waste. Um, other seeds have promising beginnings, but then wither soon thereafter. And yet there are other seeds that produces a harvest beyond all expectation. And that is very much the process that we see within evolution as well. Some species burst into bloom, go, into, go extinct. Others don't get going at all. And, and other streams produce a, a life like we've never expected would be possible or that we could never have predicted. And so uh, if creation happens through Christ, we can expect it to... To not be the, the brute force of an architect that, that conforms and manipulates everything to his own designs. But we can expect it to be more like the self-giving, extravagant love that enables freedom in his creation to realize possibilities. Um, uh, uh, and they participate in that. So, in conclusion, the design that we observe in nature uh, is the end result of a very long story. God's um, participation in this design is, is not the one who manipulates his ideas onto creation, but rather God's participation is one of opening up possibilities, opening up the space, giving the freedom, enabling the creativity and inviting his creatures to participate with him in creating true novelty. He draws us into greater meaning, into greater beauty. And so the processes, the design we see is this collaboration. It's co-creation. It is God giving the possibilities and creation realizing some of them. And sometimes, you know, in true freedom, we are able to even realize possibilities that are contrary to God's desire for our good and for what's best for us but this is the God who even suffers the consequences of our uh, decisions with us he never enforces his will upon creation so let me end off with a scripture to to kind of just give that sense of this collaborative co-creative way in which God Creates. In Genesis, you know, as we go through all the days of creation, it is beautiful how God speaks to his creation. He's, when he, whenever he wants to make something new, he speaks to his creation and invites it to join him in this creative process. So, for instance, when God wanted to make the fish of the sea, he doesn't just do it in a heavenly aquarium and then throws it into our ocean. But rather God speaks to the sea and he says, See, bring forth life. Bring forth creatures. See, do you know what life, what beauty is possible for you? And so he seduces his creation to join him in in creating something novel and new. Let me just make this personal quickly as well. It, it, your life uh, has got such possibilities in front of it. 
We are not dealing with a God who's trying to smack you back into his plan or in, into a, a, a predefined path or blueprint. We are dealing with the God of possibilities, the God who always stands in front of you and says, do you know what beauty, what meaning is possible for your life? Come join me. <laughs> in co-authoring a story that has never been written before, in creating meaning that has never been imagined before. And so this is the kind of design that manifests. It's a design in which both creator and creature joins one another and produces new novelty. Thank you. Bye.